the video you've been asking me to make, but I don't like being told what to do. Ow, sliver! My wife is calling. Hi. What time is it? 5.25. Ah, bleed. Just gotta film me talking to the camera. I mean, I'm doing it right now. As soon as I finish this. Love you. Bye. But I don't like being told what to do, so I haven't done it. But it seems like I probably should do it, so now I'm doing it. This is the in-camera transitions tutorial video by Jesse Driftwood circa late 2018. To the computer! We get started with the how <clears throat> how of these transitions I think it's important that we first discuss well, what is a transition but more importantly why are you using them a good video with no transitions is still a good video and a bad video with all the transitions in the world will never save it transitions should be treated as another tool in your toolkit to tell stories they are not fundamentally cinematic. Usually what you want to happen is the camera disappears, the edit disappears, and every decision serves to make you fall deeper into the story, to make you connect more with the characters. And so what can happen with these transitions is they actually make you more aware of the camera. However, in this world of YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, there's a bit more of a marriage between the creator and the creation. And I think you would agree that a lot of me, my videos, is about me and the camera and how that relates to my life and you and your camera and your life. All right, I'm losing it here. Um, let's backpedal and let's get into what exactly a transition is in the first place. So a transition is anything really that takes you from one frame to another frame that helps the story, the edit in particular, flow. Your editor is gonna typically have these transitions like cross dissolve and star wipes and this other one that I found. And in more recent years, people have made their own transition packs. They make zoom effects and whips and pans and all that sort of thing. So people are constantly asking me, Jesse, which transitions do you use? And the simple answer is none of them. I make all of my transitions in camera. What I mean by this is when I have my camera, at the end of a shot, I'm gonna whip it in a direction, and at the beginning of the next shot, I'm gonna whip it in the same direction. So that, in the edit, there's literally just a hard cut, and because there's no decipherable information in that motion blur, well, you don't see the cut, and it seems like some sort of fancy voodoo wizardry has taken place, the truth is, I just whipped the camera, and I cut the shot, and I whipped the camera, and boom, Bob's your uncle, Sally is your aunt, God rest her soul. So for me, a transition is anything that obstructs or obscures the frame, and sometimes that's vehicles driving by or camera dollying behind objects. Sometimes that's whips and really anything that makes your frame less understandable. The reason why this works is similar to what magicians call sleight of, nope, uh, misdirection. Because you may assume that when the camera whips right, what you're gonna see is, well, what's to the right of the camera. However, what you may have taken someone from is indoors to outdoors, or what you may have taken someone from is daytime to nighttime. It acts as a way to keep your viewer engaged because they're constantly left wondering what's happened, what's in the frame, and hopefully in not a confusing way. And so while this may all seem rather basic, there's actually quite a few little techniques that go into this. So I wanted to offer you some tips to help rectify some of the more commonly made mistakes. So here's that. So, the first and most important thing you need to know, and the biggest mistake I see, you have to know what your shot is gonna be. So you don't wanna just be with your camera, just whipping it around, throwing it, without already first knowing where you want your frame to end. So the goal isn't take the camera out, whip it, and then kinda of find something, and then whip it away. The goal is pretend there's no transition. Figure out what do you wanna see in your frame, and then once you have your exact composition, you can kind of work backwards. So you can say, okay, this shot needs to whip from the right, or this shot needs to be revealed from behind something. Tip number one, know what you're gonna shoot before you whip the camera around. Tip number two is that your camera motion should, to an extent, make sense. It should be either following action or having a consistent 
flow within the edit. So if I were to film Kristoff, hi Kristoff, riding his one wheel and he's riding from right to left, I probably don't want to whip from left to right to follow him again to whip again. It's going to feel jarring and disjointed. So what I can do is if I just go to the other side of the street, now I'll be whipping from left to right, following with him, and then whipping again. See? Much, much better. So the next thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is the overall color and exposure of what's in the frame when you're whipping, because you don't want to whip up to a bright blue sky and then whip out of your underexposed black shirt, then nothing's going to get lost in the motion blur because it's going to be a hard cut between bright blue and dark black. So if your last shot did happen to whip up to a bright blue sky, look around. Maybe there's a blue garbage can you can come up from, or maybe there's a brighter patch of pavement or something like that. Just avoid drastically different exposures between frames or drastically different colors. So the next tip is don't always be whipping your camera the same direction all the time. Get creative with it. If you whipped one time, well, what else could you use to have motion blur and obscure the frame? So that last shot, the camera itself dollied past a beige wall and then now I've just thrown my beige jacket out of the way. So we've gone from a moving shot to a static shot, but the transition is still sold because the direction remains the same and the overall color and brightness remains the same, like all the tips we talked about before. The next tip is actually about focus and exposure. You're going to want to lock your focus, lock your exposure, because as we mentioned, you already know your shot. So if I'm gonna whip to myself, I'm gonna find my shot, disable the autofocus, and then I'm gonna do the whip because you don't wanna have to see this happen in the shot. And you don't wanna have to wait for the camera to get in focus because when you're using all these transitions, what you want is for there to be a nice clean flow through your edit. And that flow is gonna get interrupted if you're waiting for the camera to focus or if you're waiting for the exposure to come back down or come back up from whatever you have just whipped from. So lock your focus, lock your exposure, know your shot. The next tip that I had is actually about how fast you're gonna be panning the camera. The last thing that you want is to whip so quickly that you can't smoothly, okay, I'm gonna take this off. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing that you want is to have whipped so quickly that you can't smoothly land on your composition. So be methodical about how much you've moved and how much motion blur you're creating, but don't just wah, wah, wah. Otherwise you're never gonna get your compositions right. The other thing is you can always speed up with a bit of speed ramping in post. If you haven't moved quite quick enough, just speed it up a bit, it's gonna work. And now that you have all these little tips, 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 <laughs> just the tip. Now that you have all these little tips, let's break down the edit from the beginning of this video. Let's see how much you can see of what I've done and uh, now I'm out of a job, I guess, I don't know. Back to the computer. All right, hopefully those tips helped you along the way. And, as promised, let's break down that first edit. And I want to see if you can more easily spot what I'm doing while shooting in order to create those edits. I'll even put a little uh, box in the corner so you can see what I was doing. Okay, no need to guess. Right here in this first shot, it might seem like a simple walk back, but I'm also slowly zooming 
the lens from about 70 millimeters to its widest of 24 millimeters by the end of the shot. Now I repeated this shot several times over because I was trying to keep that little cathedral as close to centered as possible so that in post I knew I'd be able to stabilize the shot and fix out any of those jiggles. Right here at the end, just a simple pan right into this gray wall. At this point, this one shot is all I've planned out and so now I know I need a second shot that is somehow revealed from gray. Looking around the studio, I found this gray pillow, which seemed to be a perfect match. So I've set the gray pillow up in a way that I can just dolly myself out from behind it, revealing a bit more of the location. Next shot is just a hard cut out, which gives more context to what that pillow was. It's just kind of mess in this chaotic studio environment. So Kristoff continue that same motion of dollying to the right as I enter frame with my backpack and he whips the camera to the right. Following that shot, I then hold the camera overhead, continuing that same whip to the right motion. However, now we've adjusted from a regular straight on perspective to a flat down overhead perspective. I'm gonna take a few steps and then we're gonna whip the camera. Following the whip up, I have Kristoff sitting at the top and just dollying out overhead to reveal an overhead shot, which shows me looking up at this machine and grabbing hold of the first shelf. We then move to a POV angle. I just stick a GoPro in my mouth, my hands grabbing the shelf, look down towards my feet, and then I use that pull and pan up with my neck in order to create the motion blur for our next transition. In the next shot, I had Kristoff follow that same motion, which is tilting up, but also raising beyond this shelf and then pushing through so that it creates this kind of 3D tunnel effect. And finally, we just cut to the wide. You see everything, chaotic studio, me making my way to the top, and there you have it. Now watching that sequence back, it's pretty clear that 90 plus percent of everything that goes into these transitions that I make is pure camera movement. However, what happens if it wasn't you that shot the footage or what happens if you forgot to shoot those transitions or what happens if you shot the transitions wrong and you whipped in the wrong direction or you panned the wrong way, what do you do? And for that answer, I have teamed up with the fine folks over at Storyblocks. Storyblocks, who are sponsoring this video, are a subscription stock footage website, but they're much more than that. They also have things like After Effects templates and music and texture backgrounds, all sorts of things to help your production along. So I've pulled up their website and I'm gonna download a bunch of footage that I didn't take and I'm gonna show you what I would do to this footage to help the edit flow. Some of these tips that I actually used in that first sequence. So let's dive into the computer and do that together. If you've been following my work for any amount of time, you'll know that I like to do a lot of speed ramping and this edit will be no different. So I'm gonna be speeding up and slowing down here and there particularly on the ends and beginnings of the clips to give the illusion that we're zooming from the first shot, which is the outer aerial shot, all the way into this marketplace. To further enhance this effect, I'm actually just also gonna keyframe a bit of zoom at the end of this clip and the beginning of the next clip to help make that zoom effect a bit more prominent. To tie these two clips together, I'm also gonna just grade them into a similar sort of neon -y vibe, which should help sell the idea that we're zooming out from this wider shot into this tighter shot of the same, hopefully, scene. Over top of these speed ramps, I'm also gonna add just a little bit of motion blur to kind of hide some of the imperfections and hide the actual cut itself. At the end of this clip, I'm gonna do a similar thing where I'm gonna speed up the end and zoom as well. But for this clip, I'm also gonna adjust the position to give it a slight slide up effect, which is going to help send us into this next drone shot here. Following this final speed ramp section, I found this nice shot tilting up to the Milky Way, and I'm gonna speed ramp the beginning of this. which is gonna send us up into the sky. And a final speed ramp at the end of that is gonna go to a completely static time lapse and how we're gonna sell this effect. I'm gonna zoom the clip itself into about 150% or so, so that on the first frame of it and a handful of frames in, I'm gonna be able to keyframe that position so it gives the illusion of a bit of a 
tilt up or a bit of a dolly up, which along with some speed ramping and along with some motion blur should help sell that effect once more. Finally, something that I don't do a lot of, but I do find it a lot of fun, and you'll see me doing it here and there in most edits. I'm actually gonna mask this next car time lapse in by drawing a mask over this car that enters frame and allowing the car to wipe the entire shot into frame. So frame by frame, I will just adjust these keyframes so that in the end, you have something that looks like this. A little bit of sound design and Bada bing, bada boom, you've got yourself a decent little edit. It's not perfect, but I did it really quickly and with a bit of finessing, I hope these tips should be somewhat helpful for you. I think that's it. I think we're done. If you guys have enjoyed this video, if you found some sort of helpful information in it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, a subscribe, a bell, a com, do the YouTube things that make YouTubers ha horn happy, that make us, make our lives fulfilled. Uh, if you hated this video, let me know why and hopefully I can do better next time because there will be a next time. Regular updates coming 2019. Love you guys, bye. Are you recording that whole time? <laughs>